Yo, what's up? We out here. Gonna do a board setup. Got my new grip yet to be released. Gonna explain some pieces about it. Show you how to put it on. That's what's up. Sick. So check this out. If you know me, you know I put a lot of thought into my boards. Every little angle has a defined purpose. And hopefully you find those purposes on your own as you skate it, if you get the board. If not, I'll explain it to you today. <laughs> so let's start with the grip tape. Yeah. So this grip tape's pretty particular. You gotta make sure your graphic is right. Okay, so it goes that way. So is this pretty much the final version? This is it. Yes. I've been pretty excited about this for a long time. Yeah. So for those who don't know, after I finished with the Olympics, I started, I fell into a depression for a bit. And while I was there, I started getting these visions of all these lines on how to do tricks. These lines started appearing. And then I was just like, my parents were so nice. They got me a flipboard, like a big white piece of paper flipboard, like this big. And I was just drawing all these lines, like <laughs> drawing a board shape and then be like, kick flip. Like, where, where do all the lines start from and stuff? So it's been a long journey, about three years. You have the coolest parents, dude. Coolest, most supportive. And then these are the lines as refined as they come. So all the lines origin from here, here, or here. And what I mean is like this line ends there, but it actually origins there. This line ends here, but it actually origins there. Sick. So this is kind of your center base. And then if you're doing an ollie, you don't usually start in the center. You'll start right in front. Yep. Yeah, yeah. right in front of that. Yeah. Unless you're doing some really crazy footed stuff. <laughs> but let's get into how, how to put it on. So we got these white holes. We're gonna, we're gonna poke through. You gotta stab the holes through. Smart that they put that on top. Did it take you a bit to figure out how to line it up perfect every time? You know, it it took me a lot of thinking, but as soon as I tried it, it worked. First try? Yeah. No way. It means all the time thinking about it was <clears throat> was perfect. It's or, worth it. Or unnecessary, depending on how you look at it. All the time thinking like, oh, is it gonna work? And you try it and you're like, oh, it worked. Why was I worried for so long? <laughs> So in the past when I've done this, I've done it with Allen keys, but I'm gonna do it with bolts this time. And that doesn't make sense to you, but it will make sense in a second. Yeah, I'm pretty curious how to do this. I'm glad that you're showing me so that I know. Yeah, it's not the easiest process. So I definitely want to put that grip on my boards because I'll still be able to get some type of like guidance for certain things. You know what I mean? Yeah. It won't match up perfectly, but it'll match up enough so that I can still use it in some fashion of how you use it, you know? And it's the problem with doing a universal grip is it, it really depends on the board. Yeah, because all the, uh, what's it called? The, the size in the middle? The width? No, the from truck to truck. Oh, the wheelbase. Wheelbase. Yeah, the wheelbase, wheelbase is different on every board. Wheelbase is different, the width and the the length of the nose and tail and where everything is and if you have an asymmetrical board then the lines are going to be slightly different so that's yep. part of simplifying it all getting the lines right yeah so what is the wheelbase on your board the vajra it's a 1425 okay which is industry standard <laughs> check that out right it's so weird looking well, this is how you figured it out, huh? Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty weird, dude. Everyone at the skate shops is gonna have to watch this. Yeah, straight up. You know? Let's see if this works, dude. If this doesn't work, I'm bummed. <laughs> if we film it and you blow it yeah because oh. i haven't been doing it with the bolts the bolts are kind of thick i've been doing it with allen keys yeah i think you got it 
This is a big... Just got to line it up a little bit sharper, you know? Here we go. Moment of truth. Oh, there's a hint. Don't kill him. Be part of your board forever. You got to make sure that it's not sticking because we do not want it to stick at this point. Yeah, you're just trying to line it up. Poke the holes through a little, right? Yeah. Don't stick, don't stick. It's really warm right now too, so it makes it a little more sticky. Grip heats up. So far so good. So we get that down and then we're gonna make sure the other ones are in the right spot. So you basically just gotta be really gentle when you're first putting it on. So if you need to adjust, you can lift it up and move it. Exactly. Okay. And that gentle is like, you just want it to touch the edges of the board. You don't want to push it down. Or just like the, yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you're saying. Like the nose and tail contact first and yeah. then slowly align it. Straight up. Looks pretty solid, bro. Dude, like that's like, that's it, you know? Yep. And then I've actually been like pushing the grip down in the formation of the lines. <laughs> like you'll follow the line? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta follow the maze, dude. You should skate your shoe until you kickflip through it. Yeah, that's the plan. You're gonna do it? Yeah, because I'm still on the first shoe, you know? Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's like a good testament, you know? Yeah. Keep track of when you started skating it, how long it last, lasted. Like, I mean, if you counted kickflips, that would have been kind of cool too. Oh my God, yeah. You know what I mean? Just how many kickflips you did to like get it to that point. Just a bazillion. <laughs> See, like I'm seeing an air bubble coming up and mm -hmm. that's just because it was touching too soon. Yeah, I just always stab them out. I use my razor and just poke them. Yeah, but in this, it's gonna make it look all wrinkled. Like if there's an air bubble, that means it's like torquing the, the grip. Got you. Oh. Maybe air bubble wasn't the right word. No, it's air bubble. It was held in the wrong position. <laughs> Damn. Looking good. That's sick. <clears throat> that is the cool thing about that grip. It just looks so cool. Like, <clears throat> I think a lot of people are just going to get it because it's your grip. You know what I mean? Skate through geometry. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I think we're calling it the theory map. Theory map. Like with music theory? Yep. Some people think it's really important to understand music theory. For me, it is personally. Mm -hmm. But some people... Like, they can just play a piano. They don't need to know what note's going to sound good next, you know? Yeah, because they already know. They just figured it out without having to understand it. And that's what skateboarders have done. They just, like, figure out where to put their feet by watching others or just The physics of the board enough. and the physics of their body. But this is, like, musical equivalent of, like, the circle of fifths or something. like. Gotcha. You know, it's just... It tells you all the things. You don't need to know them. But if you watch someone skate and you look at their board, you'd be like, oh, damn, he's following that line. Yeah. Dude, that's great. Okay. It looks awesome. Let's do this part. This board's 
more important to uh, rub the grip than most because it's good for your eye to know where all the curves are underneath that grip tape. Gotcha. Like some boards, you can just kind of wing it. And you can do that with this board too, but it definitely helps to see the lines. Because otherwise you might think that the knife's getting stuck when really there's a like curve that you're trying to go around. Yeah. That knife is really quiet though. It's I was just realizing that. Yeah, because it's a good knife. It's my beloved. <laughs> we got the one sheet. I love the the red lines. They pop really well. Yeah, they're important because they're not flick lines. They yeah, they're they're yeah, they're the solid lines. They are Stay there. Probably wanna, a while. If you ever want to try my board shape, you can just come here, suss it out. Tongva Park. <laughs> <laughs> but look at that, dude. Look how well it all lines up. Yeah, it looks beautiful, dude. For grip tape art, that's some of my favorite grip tape art because a lot of this stuff is just too messy, or you know what I mean? Yeah, it throws you off. Yeah, that would not throw me off at all. Throws you on, dude. Throws you on. I want to just get into it. So check this out. This is like... So there's these different shades, right? Mm -hmm. So the white shade right here. This is a channel. From here all the way up. So it's not like you follow this line. You can. It's that zone. But this is the zone. And then kick flips, you don't usually start with your foot back here. So it made sense to start that line there, even though it might be further back. But like, when your foot's on the board, you're pretty much covering it anyways, unless you're Shane O'Neill and your foot's like right there and you're just going to Yeah. And then, so that is for when you actually want to flick off of the nose. So you have an ollie. Like when I grew up, when I was growing up, they called that an ollie flip. Really? Yeah, an ollie kickflip when you actually could pop them up and over stuff because everyone <laughs> learned them out of the concave. So then th this area, which is of course repeated on all four sides, goes off the concave. So there's leverage here on the concave and there's leverage here on the nose mm -hmm. for all your flip tricks. This would be like any kind of rotational flip trick, like a varial flip, varial heel. Tray flip. Tray flip, hard flip, even frontside flip. Laser. Laser. <laughs> but uh, Vincent Malou will do frontside flips up here. So that's why there's no, hey, this is where you do your trick. Yeah. The point of this is to help you visualize the paths of momentum here mm -hmm. and that when you're trying to flick off the concave and when you're trying to flick off the nose it's quite a different movement way different way different it's not a matter of just moving it up and up and up until you're finally there it's a different kind of direction and different that, kind of pop too if you want to flick off that area mm -hmm. and your the way your legs are sitting and everything like but this brings me to this. Check this out, bro. This is the sleeper. This is the sleeper tab right there. This little zone where nothing's hitting. You'll notice on the concave, that's the flattest part. Yeah. So you have oomph on the concave. You have oomph on the nose. But right there, you have zero oomph. <laughs> mob. It's mob. And, and it flips super slow. And you'll see skaters like Versace Plug utilizing that because it gives you this unique kind of flippy style yeah it's a very small quiet spot but it makes the board flip super weak mm -hmm. which you can use to your advantage downstairs or, like that big, that big stairs and stuff yeah but like I'll, when i was a kid i was thinking that you would flick out of here and then eventually you would move it further and further up but 
it kind of maxes out right there and then as soon as you're up here it's a different i it's hope not, that makes sense too. no it totally makes it makes sense to me so if you want to pop a kick flip and get it to go higher you pop hard and you flick off it here yeah but like, if you just want to do a normal kick flip you just pop lightly and flick off of there or or this one is often used for like not uh flips out of something which one is uh the the concave flip oh, okay like no slide nollie flip yeah very not very often someone's gonna flick out of here off a no slide nollie flip. i'm gonna have to remember that because i've been trying to mess around with those a little bit you yeah a lot of people will use those little increments when you're flicking you I mean, can you literally, can you use, can you literally flick it here versus here? Like, well, what happens is on command, like, you know what I mean? Well, what, what happens is like, you think about it before you do it. And then in the action, there's no thought. And then you can either review the footage or if you have white on your shoes, you'll see the lines left by your shoe. But this is helping to, to visualize what's happening. Not necessarily like you're in the middle of the flip and you're like, whoa, there, there's not enough time for that. But like, even with contest skating, you do all the practice and you see the run. When you're actually doing the run, you're not thinking about what's next, hopefully. So it's in the act, your mind's blank. But in the prep, you can have your foot set up and reference at all these lines. So those are the important flick lines. What are these ones? Yeah, okay. those, I, I have no idea, so I really want to hear your uh, theory. This is the niche 360 inward heel flip line. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, if you really want to do a trick where, like, 360 inward heel flip, you flick there and the board kind of goes like that. Yeah, it's a quick fold. Unless you're Chris Chan. Chris Chan did the most proper 360 inward heel flip I've ever seen in my life. Like, he fully flicked it. But... That's not to say like not to use these lines. They're just not very useful in regular skateboarding, but yeah. they still exist in niche skate. Yeah, and then these lines, they're to represent that this red line isn't a stopping point, that you go through that. It's just a continuation of Got the you. channel. And then this red line, that's the heart of the whole shape. The whole shape was made to support this red line and what that red line is is the pressure pocket to make it flip so the the lines are flick lines but they're also pop lines so if you pop in this triangle it's not going to flip you can do a pop 360 shove it and if you're popping from this triangle it's not going to flip now if you pop in this triangle it's going to tilt a little bit and if you pop over here, it's gonna flip like crazy. Yeah. So when you're doing kick flips, you might want that leverage to flick against and stuff like that. So that was the really hard part. Like this started with lines everywhere. Dude. <laughs> but to simplify it down to the flick lines also double as the pop lines that cleaned it up so much and then interrupting the origin of the lines cleaned it up okay let's move on made it easier to understand sick bro yeah. <laughs> so on my setup i ride i can't wait to get some of that grip dude i can't wait until i see someone skating it and they're like dude you know they let you know how much they like it yeah or or hate it or whatever you know like because <laughs> for me it's such a bonus yeah you know and people People I respect are like, oh yeah, beginners are gonna like that. And I'm like, yeah, but I like it. They're like, you like it? And I'm like, yeah, dude, like it helps me understand what's going on. Yep. There's so many other things. Like, as I said, this is for varial flip, this section. Yeah. But don't follow the rules. Do a varial flip up there. But guess what's gonna happen? Now it's a forward flip. Oh yeah, That's you're right. The forward flip is by varial flipping off the nose. Yep. And then if you want to do a tray flip, you pop from here, or here if you're regular, but for me here. But then you want, you learn tray flips and you lost your varial flips. Yeah. Do the exact same thing, but pop from here. For varial flip. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I do too. Yeah. Yeah, I just pop and flick and it does it perfect. Right. Yeah, and it, it's and so good. The, the feet do kind of the same thing, but it's your 
it's your beginning stance yeah that changes everything it is yeah that's smart to do that i always used to do that too even my front foot it'd be a little further up for varial flip you yeah, know what yeah, i mean it's yeah. not the same as trey i make those two stances very different so that my body knows the difference of what it's trying yeah, you know I, I feel that yeah that's pretty important to do dude but a lot of the time you learn a new trick and you forget an old trick because it was so intuitive you didn't understand what you changed yeah so this helps you like visualize. understand it and your body to understand it yeah you and know your, and that your feeling because visualization is everything for us skaters yeah and to yeah the visualization in your mind but then the, also the feeling inside your body yeah you know what i mean dude the feeling inside your body i always i, I compare it to like Jimi hendrix versus frank zappa mm -hmm. like frank zappa didn't follow any rules he had no knowledge of theory at all he just did it he just played and then frank zappa had such a superior knowledge of all that stuff that he was arguably the only person that could write Jimi Hendrix's songs. No way. Yeah, because he could like hear it all, feel it in his body and translate it. He knew all the chords. He knew what he was doing. But no hate to, to Hendrix. At all. No. Dude, no. Like, he, he's like a soul musician. Dude, that... You know what I mean? That is the heart. Yeah, he's the, that's the soul. So it's like, it's, it's not like this is for everybody and it has to be for you. But. It's just two different types of artists. And for me, I like, I like understanding. I thought these bearings were too fast for you, Andy. No, the Swiss ceramics were too fast. Oh! These are faster than Swiss. What? Yeah. Not faster than the Swiss ceramics. Andy says if you skate ceramics in bowls, it's really dangerous because normally when you land in a bowl, you slow down a little bit. With those, you speed up. It's like, here, let me explain it. Yeah. <laughs> with normal bearings, when you land with pressure down a set of stairs, like a 10 stair, you have like a second that it's going a little slower and you can regain yourself. A second is way too long, exaggerated. Yeah. It's like a split second. Yeah, it's like a tenth of a second. But with ceramics, the balls don't compress at all. They're so much harder than steel. Mm -hmm. So you land with the same speed you had at the top. Damn. So if you're not familiar with it, you end up slipping out a lot of the stuff. Yeah, mad slip outs. And even like a rock fakie on a little quarter pipe, like, woo! Dude, the Swiss ceramics are scary fast. Damn. But these are like, probably the fastest bearings I've ever skated besides them. And they just last forever. Like, the other thing that George told me about the ceramic balls is they're so much harder than steel that when sand gets in them... It crushes it. It crushes the sand. Damn! Like, the sand doesn't mess with, this, with the balls. Yeah. So these are, like, my new favorite bearing, dude. Like, by far. Dude, they even look cool. Dude, they're so good. Do you know how much they retail for? It's like 100 Good. But here, let me walk you through what I'm riding here. We got the mini logo trucks, but I switched it out for the Bowden's Hard bushings so they're full hard no yep. half and half no half and half this time word obviously the vajra baby hair and board we got this new unreleased grip yeah i cannot wait for this to be out what are you naming it again the th uh theory map theory map grip tape andy yeah. anderson theory map grip tape theory map so dope so just from right here you can see like from popping in the triangle super flat stop flipping i'm over here a little bit if I'm over here. Yeah. That's why I set up that's why I set up one of your boards for uh for jumping off gaps. Because then if I pop off there, it's never gonna flip on me. You know what I mean? And my other board's so small it's like dangerous to jump off stuff. Oh beautiful, right? There is one uh thing I'm gonna say about the pressure pocket. My one friend was push was popping on it as hard as he could and it wasn't working. And he's like, what's going on? You got to give it a little scoop. What happens is it only initiates after the tail hits the ground. It's called a bounce back up. Oh, and, and then you, you push to, it. And you keep pushing it through that. Yeah. So if you, if you throw your board with all your weight and then let go like you would on an ollie, it'll actually spring off the bushing and go the other direction. No way. Yeah. Weird. So that's how some people do tree flips. They like kind of... It's a spring action. They throw it. And then it starts to go this way, and then they get this point right there, and they throw it like that. That's kind of how I do it. To but pop me, them? I push it through, and then I create that wall and flip it. 
flip. Sick. So when you're doing kick flips, put your foot maybe more on that side. And when you pop, it creates that wall. Boom. Bam. For you to flick out. Chilling. Kickflip mark? Yep. It's in the channel. It's not exactly on one of the lines. Yeah, it's in between. There you go. Perfect, dude. It almost seems like you need. So there's the varial flip mark. Much lower. Right, and then let's try frontside flip. Damn. So frontside flip. I'm doing it. Crazy. Let's try varial heel. See, I'm gonna use that for, for front side flips for sure because my front side flips regular flip out like where yours do. But my switch ones, they go all the way off and yeah. they get way higher. Yeah, dude, that's how you do them proper. So we got the rails on now. Got them all centered, I'm all stoked. But there's one thing that I wanted to say that I did not say yet, which is these lines also describe the skateboard like this board to the untrained eye looks so crazy and random and there's all these curves and what's going on this grip tape is the essence of like these lines were here before the grip tape was made they were yeah. just invisible and i was constantly drawing them in videos you used to always see me like drawing with my fingernail yeah like this invisible line right here from this corner to this we like that's the line it's there it's not invisible anymore and that's like that feels good dude to be able to point to lines opposed to like because i could see them for so long they weren't all neat and tidy like this yep they were moving around sometimes but yeah that's the other thing about this tape is it describes the board and when you look at it on the board the board makes sense totally you're like oh it's wide right there because there's these lines right there you're like, oh. yeah like it ties it all together yeah so that's that's what's up sick bro i'm hyped that it's finally coming out Woo! And I forgot to bring a knife, so I'm gonna use my beloved knife. Damn, bro. I have an X-Acto blade if you wanna go grab it. Oh yeah, you got an X-Acto? Yeah. yeah, I'd rather not waste my Here, beloved. hold the phone and talk to yourself. <laughs> What's up, phone? <laughs> I love this spot. There's so much to skate here. Are you okay with being in this? Dude, you're sitting on the, one of the better spots here. I know, it's waxed right there too, huh? You got the ledge, and then you hit the other ledge down. Or you can hit the pull jam ledge up to this ledge. How is this stuff to grind on, though? It's pretty good. If you oil it up good, get some good grease on there. It's like a kingpin that tries to hit it, huh? Yeah, it's kind of a... I guess softwood wouldn't has, be the has right. Has this thing been destroyed? Like people coming off the be bench onto it? Yeah, I for sure, it. dude. There's been a lot of tricks filmed here. I think someone did like tail slide, kickflip tail slide. 
I'm sick to do like a. I could be making that like up. Grind like 180 something down it, you know. Oh wow, that would you know be sick. I mean? Yeah, grind like and then alley it. Forward and then like 180 and then down it. Dude, that would be rad. Or like or like play like a front blunt on it. If you're goofy, you know what I mean, and then pop off and go like fakey 50 down it. Oh my god! Just front blunt to fakey 50. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, That's like. Kind of body maneuver. That'd be gnarly. That'd be so sick. I like the front 50, back 180 grind. Fakey grind down, that'd be sick. Yeah, there's a lot possible here. You can go to bed here too. It's like a really good sleeping bench. It used to be. Well, I guess you can sleep on the ends. I got pretty good length here. And you tell me you can't fit under there? Or maybe you can't, but I can. All right, well then how come nobody's doing like a, coming up and doing like a manual trick on this and then uh, hippie jumping over that thing? Dude, that's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> like three hippies in a row and then and then coming this way and then off down. Yeah. Oh, wow, they waxed that one up too. That one hasn't been waxed in the past. It's so good. Yeah, bro. Dude, I'm excited for this exacto blade right now. It's gonna so feel so the, good. You put the truck hole, the bolt holes in it first. Yeah, so then we line up the grip perfectly. Because otherwise, if it's a little bit off, it's like, it's hard on the brain. But if you look at this, it's all perfect. Like, oh the corner's right at the corner. It's all sized up amazingly. Sick Thanks. Swans and oh, oh yeah. No, this so guy's sorry. over here. This guy's over here YouTubing, man. Yeah, man. So these are two blue herons. They represent the the first boards. So I had the heron board, and then I had the you could call it mama heron, like the little version. Mm -hmm. And then they laid an egg. So that was the second board was the egg board, and this is the baby heron. So that's the representation of this. And then these are two and symbols for Andy Anderson. Wow. And the heart is like the love for the mama and daddy? Daddy or? Yeah. Never forget. So sick. Straight up. That's deep. After I set this up, I would love to explain the, the grip to you. Because you're a real person. You might have questions. Because otherwise I'm just explaining it to someone who already understands it. Yeah. I mean, Mike, if you want to... If you want, if you have any questions to ask him about it, feel free to like ask away. I just asked. Oh yeah. So oh, you already got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> He's asking about the bolt hole. But we got that knife. No. Oh no, knife. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Oh, dude, the beloved knife is being used. I have a backup one at home. Yeah. Sacrificial. Or you, or use some goo gone. What on the knife? Yeah. What do you think? Oh, I just. I was thinking you didn't want to sacrifice your knife with it getting just gooey, you know? Oh, no, I just, I want it to be sharp. This is like my, my everyday. That's your Venice weapon? <laughs> no, I would not use it. Yeah, Zappa knew everything about music theory. Everything. Everything. He would literally write music on paper just to like outsmart the people could, it was like impossible to play. <laughs> and then he would have like Steve Vai and stuff like, play this. It was just so advanced. Yeah, and then that's how he found people like Steve Vai. No way. Yeah, it's by like that. He would audition, and he would find guitar players that could read music, and he'd be like, here, play this. And there's supposed there's some sheet, there's some piece of sheet music that they have that is supposedly like impossible to play. It's called like the black, it's called like the black song or something because the sheet, the notes are, it just looks like solid black. Cool. <laughs> the notes are so crammed together. <laughs> There's so many of them that it's something like that. It's something called something like that. I heard the story. Before. That's so cool. Dude, Zappa is such a legend, bro. Yeah, he's, he's still making music too, isn't he? No, he did. Oh, he damn did. it. I got to go to his house and stuff. See his, his, his studio. And no way. Right after he passed? Yeah, right, I think it was right after. It was a, a few years after he passed. Oh, my God. Because I, I knew a couple of his kids. Oh, wow. Yeah, Lady Gaga owns that house now. No way. Well, you know Moon Unit? I, I've met her before. I don't know her, but I've met her. 
No way. I've seen her like maybe a year ago was the last time I seen her. Damn, party. legendary dude. Sorry, Elvira's party. Really? <laughs> Elvira's birthday party. You saw, you, you know Elvira or? I don't know her, but I, I know people that are like very, very close. Cool to with her? her? Yeah. I, I went to one of her last shows at Knott's Berry Farm. My, my ex-girlfriend is really into her. So she was like, yeah, this is, these are my last shows. Like, I'm done. You know, and like. That, she was at that birthday party. She was turning 71. Dude, yeah. And she still she, looks amazing. She looks crazy. Incredible. Isn't that nuts? Yeah, she looks like a ginger from Gilligan's Island. When yeah. When you don't have all her gear on. Thanks, dude. I wonder what, are, like, those people's just secrets ginger, are. You know, reddish hair. Yeah. And just, I mean, drop dead gorgeous. Mm-hmm. In her 70s. Yeah, it's super, super nice. That's unbelievable, dude. Humble, like, person, very, very I hung out with Weird Al Yankovic that night too. No way. <laughs> He's another guy. He reads music really well. Yeah, really? He, he would know music theory. I can see that. <laughs> Weird Al. Yeah, super, super nice guy. Serious? Yeah, really, really, really just nice guy. I mean, I just happened to catch him at, you know, it was Elvira's birthday party. So was, and there was only maybe like 30 people there. It wasn't like a big Real party. mellow? It was like in a backyard, like a backyard barbecue. Damn, that's so tight. Because they, they all, um, there's this lady up there in uh not burbank but like van nuys and she has these writing classes for writing memoirs mm. and that's why uh she helped weird out write his memoir that became his movie wow uh, helped elvira write her book that came out like two years ago that's so sick i her story is probably amazing yeah, I want to know some of her secrets for how she take she's taking care of herself because when you see her you're like you look like you're like 45 that's insane. She just uh, takes. She does. She takes very good care of herself. Really she's good. Very uh, conscious about her food and, and stuff like that. She's really nice. She's a sweetheart. That's awesome. It's the best when like famous people are really cool. Yeah, you know. You're right, Henry. You're the music. Yeah. He just knew it all from playing in blues bands and watching people. He could look because he could watch somebody. Just imagine if a skater could just watch you do your hardest trick right here and just watch you and then go over there and, and do the same trick. Dude. Maybe not as good or anything like that, but he could do it. Yeah, he would understand like, it. Hendrix would grew up watching all, playing in all these blues bands, you know, when the, when the rock and roll was for, for, forming. And he just learned all those blues progressions and just figured out where... Figured it all out, yeah, man. Figured out where the boxes were on the guitar. Yeah, Hendrix is the best. <laughs> Truly, bro. Yeah, and skating you would be the equivalent of you'd be the equivalent of somebody that just had the most insane, like epic style, you know? Like Jay Adams or something. Yeah, Jay Adams or like a Cardiel or somebody, you know, they could do yeah, big yeah. shit that just it just looks fucking beautiful, you know? Yeah. Really right. So, Super good. Dude, Hendrix. Zappa's more like a Rocky Mullen or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Just inventing just the most gnarliest technical things ever. Those are good comparisons. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is great, dude. Yeah. I didn't really think about it, but, you know. Maybe, we like, like, maybe we should always have, like, maybe we should always have a third element for these now. Yeah. You know what true. I mean? If you need to break down your, if you want to get somebody's input on your grip tape, talk to some, like, kids or something. Oh, yeah. It'll just sit there like, oh, holy shit. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we I mean, we it did. It's mind boggling, but when you're saying this, I'm thinking of whole other things that have nothing to do with a grip tape, like filming things. What, like you're relating it to? There's it a or? thousand frame 4K camera sitting in the house right now. Damn. That's slower than slow motion. Which one? It's which like one a, is? It's not a Phantom. It's like. It's one of those other ones. Name of it. It's called a. It's one of the little boxes. It, it's, it looks like a Black Magic pocket camera. Dang, you should bring that out, dude. It's not mine. We filmed with it last night. Oh, so it's like it a rental? It doesn't have cards in it. Oh. You have to dump it right off of it. Because it's... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know why so all those are like that. It. It's called a... Uh, it's a... Um, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. But I then, thought... That would be sick to us. I am, I'll tell you, it's not, don't put this on camera on YouTube or whatever. You film it, but I just Hold on one second. Damn, really? Yeah. Okay, let me, let me just check one out. Yeah. So how many commercials are you guys filming today? <laughs> <laughs> the board setups always end up being pretty, uh, pretty are intense. Guys, are, are you guys normally this busy? Ah, uh, no, we, this is, this is a mellow Bearing day, spot, actually. A grip spot, like, <laughs> <laughs> finishing off, getting some transitions. Right well, we, we haven't even we haven't even talked about the trucks. 
<laughs> we're talking about the setup, you know? What kind of trucks are these? These are mini logo trucks. What? Yeah. He's been rocking those for the last like 10 years, huh? Not 10. Oh, Just no, about? Not 10. Before these guys are rode for going. <laughs> but dude, th th this is like, this is the trick I ride. I didn't know that. Yeah, they're super light. They're price point. They're like the cheapest truck you can buy. And then they're they're bowed yeah, both see that. this way and this way oh, wow. for locking into stuff without having to make your own grooves. So it kind of forces it to the wheel. Yeah, yeah George has really innovated some stuff, huh? Oh yeah. And then the way that the base plates curve, it like carries a lot of uh, yeah. strength. Yeah, it's like a gusset. Yeah. Are they like that on the underneath? Before you bolted them down inside the uh, base plate, they're oh. hollow under there. Yeah, so it's all round in there too. Yeah, so, so it's, that's how they stay light. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. You know what's up? Exactly, I don't know bro. What's up. You just told me what's up. <laughs> you told me what's up. Yeah, it's you so drop sick. the stuff all over the place. Here. Here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah you're gonna lose that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know that. I didn't know they made trucks. Yeah, I they, honestly didn't know that. Yeah, they. It, I think they made them for their completes, but you know how George is such a stickler. Like, if he's so gonna he make it complete, a super good quality truck at a price point. Yeah, exactly. And the turning on them's good. Yeah, turning's great. Wow, man, that's pretty wicked. Yeah, they're pretty solid, dude. I said, what up are they size wise? Are they look like around a one fifty nine, or are they one sixty something, one sixty one inch? They never went into the millimeter okay, propaganda. Okay, so they're just inches. Yeah, so these are eight. Eight. Should, we do, should I want me to whip out a calculator right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it, dude. That'd let me be helpful. See, let me see. Let how, me many, see what it says. how many millimeters is eight yeah, inches? Let's go. Uh, Translate for all the non mini logo right Inches ready. to millimeters. <sighs> okay, so, uh, no, that can't be, that won't be right because, no, no, maybe it will. Okay, so, uh, eight. Dude, these bearings are so good. I'm gonna yeah, ask for a sec. That's not right. I don't know how they're getting the, uh, because it says 203, but I'm wondering if they're measuring it from the axle to axle. It looks like that. It's not the hanger. So like Indies and stuff, that's, it must be the hanger size. Yeah, that's like, like, I don't understand. Dude. It's so, why not just do it? They just inches? come up with random numbers, pretty much. Let's see. <laughs> like, 160, 169 is only six, six and five eighths. So it's the, it must be the hanger size. Yeah, bro, they're not tripping. the axle size. They're tripping, bro. No new wheels this time? No, I ran out. Dang, no way. Yeah, I gotta make an order, bro. But these are so new. These probably only touched the ground once. Oh, you're chilling. I mean, it seems like all your, all the products that you that are coming out of Cal are pretty high quality. Oh, dude. I bet you probably things last longer for you. Than dude, it's insane. The, the quality level on George's stuff is, is beyond requirement. If you skate for Skate One or work with Skate One, you're extremely lucky. Because yeah. you, you get all the best bearings, all the best boards, yeah. best wheels. Dude, it's insane. Everything. Those trucks are cool, man. They're really good. I mean, just at the fact that they made the hanger, you know, so the hanger's not is, is basically, you know, you're farther away from the kingpin, my mm -hmm. grind, you know. Yeah. The great kingpin clearance is like everything about the truck is great. Like I just I don't have any complaints. The only thing I would complain about is like. They could up the quality of the metal. It's a hardness. Yeah. Do they, do they grind that, through pretty faster, you think, than maybe another one? Or? I think they, they tend to bend and break if I'm skating 10 sets. Yeah. So if I'm skating a 10 set or more, then they get questionable. Mm -hmm. But if I'm skating like a 5 set or a 7 stair or less, there's no problems. Yeah. It's all good. It's like, in, it's... Yeah, but I wonder what. But, I wonder, but they what, do I wonder that. what percentage of street skaters are skating ten sets, ten sets and above. You know. Yeah. Right. Is that <laughs> what are you talking like? <laughs> maybe like two percent. So like, low. Of all skateboarders that are in the buying. Yeah. Pool. So low. Maybe one percent. Maybe one percent that are skating that hard. Yeah, and the and the reason for that is for the price point. Keep it yeah. price point. So it's like, yeah, we can up the metal, but then it's going to cost more, and then it's not like. What we're looking for. I'm anymore. sure George, George could tell you if it's like a T3 or a T, T6, you know what I mean? Hardness. 
Oh, yeah. I've skated those trucks, too, and they've lasted me, like, six months, no problem. I would think a softer material would be funner for, like, slapping, mm. and grinding, you know, concrete yeah. ledges and stuff, because um, it would just be, like, like more, more of a buttery type grind, you know? Yeah. You're on it with that, dude, the magnesiums yeah. that have come out. Because those are softer. Yeah, they grind bricks. You yeah. don't even need to wax yeah, them. They're softer. Really? Magnesiums. Yeah, because they just fall off. The metal just falls off. Magnesium is wow. way softer than aluminum. Holy crap. It's a, it's a great down, but it's just the weight of it is way less. Mm. Yeah, That's so it's what even lighter too. For. So it's like Dan Corgan was riding him for a bit and he was like, grind this ledge, unwaxed brick ledge. He could like 50 50. Like, no yeah. way. It was insane. Who makes the magnesium trucks? Sensor. Uh, but they're going out of business. Tracker was the first oh, one. Really? I think so. Tracker started making magnesiums in like the late 70s, I think, maybe somewhere around there. Oh, Those wow. yellow ones. Tracker. That's what I rode before yeah. I rode for gulling. Yeah. But they, they would trackers. break. The base plates would break on them. People, everybody had problems with ba breaking the base plates. Oh, on. man. Bro, we're on the last step. Yeah. Like, Vincent Seems like you need another version of that grip tape. That, that has zones are marked. You know? That's how you do kickflip front lip. Yeah. Wait, what are you talking about? So you would be sick if you had one like that grip tape for kids where the zones were marked and you had like a. You know? Yeah, or like, you know what I mean? Like, so you could tell well, this kids, is a good conundrum. To you know what I mean? So you could tell kids this is your whatever, this is your, 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 your like sunshine it, flip area. Like you could say like Ollie zone right here. Like kickflip right here, so here's, or here's, you know. Here's the problem with that: is everyone does shit different. Oh, they do. Yeah. So it's like you but they can, want to know how you do it. But I can <laughs> I can kickflip off that line if I want. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my god! Like, I just say like these are the momentum flow lines that naturally appear. Yeah. And how you do tricks is going to be different from anybody else. It's a nice guide for them. It looks cool though. It looks like it's like cut into the tape, you know, from a distance. Yeah, it does. Like somebody cut the tape and put like a perfect grip tape job. Yeah, a lot of people don't think it's art. Like they think I drew it or something, like cut it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's like that's that's the vibe, dude. Here, okay, let's try tray flip with this fresh set. Damn. Trays have gotten so much better over the years. Yeah, we're just we're in this lower area there. Dope. But it, see, it looks like I'm flicking out here. Yeah. But what's happening is the board's rotating. And then you're flicking. Yeah. Because then it's harder to hit up here because it's turning. Right. Mm hmm. That makes sense. Damn. You get that, that weird stuff going on. Hey. Anyways, I'm not warmed up. Cool. I'm going to put these rails on. Well, good job explaining everything, dude. It's awesome here and you break all that down, though. Yeah, right? It's trippy, right? It's super trippy. It's interesting. There's a lot there. It is a lot. I always say this. there's so much that goes into it. But it's cool to see the finished product look so clean. For real. Oh. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to head out. Yeah, Andy. Your jacket is just fucking phenomenal. It's so cool. Bro. Thanks. <laughs> I don't even... I don't even know where you would, where you could even <laughs> come up on a mushroom corduroy jacket. I got it from an ex girlfriend from high school. You've had it that long? Yeah. Damn. I probably got it when I was like sixteen. That's so yeah, sick. Thank her for that sometime. Yeah, I do. I'm sure you do I do on the regular. <laughs> no, oh, you'll be at Harbor in the morning. Yeah. Okay. I'll see. Day, what day one say? Oh, he hasn't got me back. He's, that means he's like doing something with his kids or he's, yeah. Screwing around on He'll probably again. be there though. Yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm be, sure he'll probably be there in the morning. So. Uh, he normally gets there around nine thirty. Yeah, but I'll get there earlier if you want. Okay. Yeah, so. Wednesdays are good for me in the morning because I roll out because my cleaning lady comes and I don't like to be there when she's there. What time does she start? She starts at ten, but I usually try to get out of there by at least like nine nine thirty. Okay. But I only live like ten minutes from there. Well, you cool. Know, yeah, so both, both of us. It's like local. both like ten minutes. 